did you say, either spiritually or professionally or both, that you were going to stand outside of that arena that you just that I not. heard Memphis Bleak declare Beyonce queen of the fucking world and brag about Aaliyah being dead to taunt Dame Dash at Madison Square Garden the night that we filmed and performed the Fade to Black concert. Mm. What year was this? Fade to Black was what, 2004? Right, right. Wow. Is this recorded, Miss Wright? What? That that was during a taping of a show? It's a movie. The movie premiered on Showtime. It was supposed to have been Sean Carter's retirement. That legendary concert that sold out in 32 minutes. Mm hmm. Honey? I'm dead, uh, I don't know. I was sitting right there on that stage, dressed in Dolce Gabbana with Gucci lace ups, with a fever of 103.2. It had just started coming down. Mm. I had gotten sick. Um, I had caught the flu right before we did the concert at Madison Square Garden. We were on the road. We did a couple of test shows up Boston, Connecticut, just to run through the show and get ready for Madison Square Garden. Um, and I had gotten sick, and saw, Sean had sent his uh, physician to come and treat me so that I would still be able to perform. And he did. Um, I was sick as a dog, but I looked great. Mm. And it just, everything felt wrong. Mm. You could feel a demonic spirit just like looming over the entire building. It was dark. On what should have been such a triumphant night, it felt um, dark. Mm. And after I finished My segment, which was the Illadelphonic segment of Fade to Black, um, which was, of course, musical directed by uh, Questlove. Um, I got off stage. I walked back. Mary was coming out. She was giving me dirty looks. I was giving her dirty looks back. Um, Because that night, she sang um, Song Cry with Jay-Z instead of... Instead of you. And... I guess that was done because Diddy insisted upon it because Mary was still mad that I fucking trashed her at Unplugged and she was looking for some kind of redemption. And she did a terrible job. And it was crazy because even when I was leaving the garden that night to head back to my hotel um, in Midtown, I could hear people saying, they should have let Jaguar sing song cry. Mary can't fucking sing. She can't sing like Jaguar. Like, you know how weird that is? Mm. I got on a Gap sweatsuit hoodie, all gray with a white tee and white 5411s. People walking next to me, talking about me right there at Madison Square Garden, don't even realize it's me. I'm a whole fucking sniper walking out the spot. Mm. And me listening to how disappointed they were at the choice that was made for the song selection at night. But anyway, before all of that, I went back to my dressing room to change. I was tired. I was exhausted. I was achy. I was still coming down. My fever, it was dropping, but it was still coming down. Um, And I heard a loud commotion while I was changing. And I had two outfits that I bought. I bought one outfit just in case I was going to go to 4040 for the after party. And then I bought a deuces, I'm out, which was, you know, my my street uniform, my Gap sweatsuit, mm-hmm. white tee, 5411s, hoodie. Um, and I was trying to figure out which clothes I was going to put on. And I heard Dane, like, screaming at the top of his lungs. And so for whatever reason, I opened up my dressing room door and I peeked out. And I looked, 
And like Dame and his, I think it was like a couple of his homies, cousins, you know, they were sitting there holding him, was forward and holding him back. He's like, I'm going to kill you motherfuckers. And I'm like, what the fuck is about to happen here in, in the back of the garden? Hmm. This, we, this shouldn't be happening tonight, you know? It's a big night for Rockefeller. Everyone should be happy, especially Dane. And then you hear Mimply, fuck you, nigga. Ali is dead. That bitch is gone. Beyonce the queen, she in now. Long live the queen. Fuck Aaliyah. Hmm. And then I heard a little voice. And said, all you got to do is put on your sweatsuit and walk out the back door and nobody will even know you're gone. Mm. And I did. And you I did. slipped out in the midst of the chaos. Right before they locked down the entire place because when they was walking Beyonce out, nobody could be in the back cage. Like, everyone had to be cleared out. As they paraded her to the stage. What was Meek Mill so mad about? Not Meek Mills, Memphis Bleak. Memphis Bleak, my bad, my bad. What was Memphis Bleak so upset about? I don't know what he was upset about. What I do know is that he didn't get no fuck that Aaliyah was dead. Actually sounded kind of happy about it. And he was professing Beyonce as the queen. I, I... It's an after show. So after you removed yourself from that, you spoke about- I did about not go to the after party that night. They were so angry with me. Because you didn't, because you walked out or the combo of walking out. Well, I walked out and I didn't party. go. See, what happened was, is everybody in the roots that was in the Illadelphonics, they went down to 4040 for the after party. And the way Sean had things set up, Back then, especially for his big events at 4040, you had the regular area, you had the bar area, you had the party area, you had the table service area, and then you had a VIP upstairs, and then you had the VIP VIP, which was Sean's private VIP. Um, and that night, anybody who was on the show had clearance to come to the party, and but people were assigned to different VIPs. Mm -hmm. The Roots were only allowed to go to the first VIP, but my name was on the list for the second VIP, mm. for Sean's private VIP. Mm. Um, and Amir called me, and I had already taken off my clothes, my makeup. I had just gotten out of the shower. I was getting into bed. I ordered room service. I turned on a movie. I just wanted to recuperate. I was tired. And Amir was like, you need to come down here to the club. And I'm like, why? Why aren't you coming? I'm like, what do you mean? Why am I not coming? I'm I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm not coming. I did my job. I'm not coming. Look, you ain't got to say, just come down here and get us into the VIP. I'm like, ain't y'all in the VIP? Y'all on the list? You're the fucking band. You're the fucking Illa Delfonis. You on the list? Yeah, but we on the list for the first VIP. You the one, you the only one on the list for the second one. You the only one on the list for Jay-Z's. You can you come down here and get us in? I said, so you want me to get out of my sick bed when I got a dinner coming and a movie on, and I just got finished taking care of myself and I need to get rest. And you want me to get up, get in the car. I'll send the car. You ain't gotta take a cab. I'm like. This isn't about who's paying for my ride. I'm not going. Mm. All you got to do is come down here and just get us into the VIP. And I said to a man, if Sean wanted you on that list, you would be on that list. If you want to get on that list, why don't you go ask Sean? Because mm. I ain't coming. I said, and don't call me back. I'm going to bed. And I hung up. I was persona non grata after that. I was the worst motherfucker in the world after that. The question that everyone should ask about that very real story that I very rarely talk about is this. 
even though I was there as a member of the Roots, why was my name the why only name, your name on Jay Z's list? Correct. That was my question. Because you were a member of the band, why do you believe that you were on that super VIP list? Well, I know why I was on the list. Could you share? Because I had a key to the apartment. That's why I was on the list. What do you mean, sis? I mean, the only people that were on that list were people that had a personal connection to him. Mm. Like I said, I was on that list because I had a key to the apartment. Mm. 